What is going on, everybody? It's me. I'm back, making more videos, just like I said I would eight months ago. <laughs> uh, I know in my last video I said I was thinking about making MLB The Show content. I was going to get content out. I missed making content. It's been eight months, so I figure I might as well start making some videos. So that's what I'm here for. I'm whipping up some good stuff. Uh... I haven't been playing a lot of MLB The Show recently, or I have been playing a lot of MLB The Show recently, have not been playing much OTP, and I figured, hey, why not do some fun little franchise things and kind of make videos to put up on my channel? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to start getting videos out for you guys. You know, looking forward to hearing what you guys think about them and what you guys want to see next, if you guys want to see me do different things or, you know, maybe try to get back into OTP. OTP is just, it's hard, man. <laughs> MLB The Show, I can just like sit here, put a video on YouTube or something, and just mindlessly build a crazy team. OTP, you gotta do like math and stuff. It's like, uh, <laughs> you gotta pay attention to numbers and stuff. It's like, uh. But we're here, we're doing an MLB The Show rebuild, and the team that I picked as an homage to my old OTP series is the Texas Rangers. Um... So just some little housekeeping here. We got the roster here. It is nothing special. It's actually pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> it's actually really bad. Um, no Joey Gallo. Obviously, this is the post-trade deadline and draft roster. So we have no Joey Gallo, but we do have Jack Leiter. So I'm. this is kind of like a Jack Leiter rebuild. Uh, so we're waiting for him to kind of pop up and get into the mix eventually. But this is what we're working with right now. Uh, not the best team. Definitely don't expect much. Uh, a lot of places we need to improve long-term. I mean, really the only positions that I'm 100% confident in long-term on this team is like first base, definitely, kind of center field, and I'm hoping Willie Calhoun does well. Every other position here, guys are on the block. It's make or break. Brock Holt usually does good, but he's old, so it's just a matter of trying to figure out who's going to fit in where. We've got a pretty lackluster bench. Um, not expecting too much from them. Pitching rotation looks even worse. I mean, Kohei Arhar is a number one. He's a 75 overall. Not great. Uh, Colby Allard and Spencer Howard are both down in AAA. I'm leaving them down there to develop a couple more or another season which is why we're running Dane Dunning and Fultonavich and Lyles and Cody in the starting rotation. Tyson Ross uh, called him up, added him to the 40-man, brought him up. He's my swing man or my long man. He's not going to do well, but he's cheap, and it's his last year, so we'll replace him. Bullpen is not very good. We've got LeClaire in the start in the closer spot. I don't know what he's going to do. You never know. The walks per nine is super low. Hernandez, I'm excited about. Pretty much all the rest of these guys, you know, Brett Martin, I'm hoping he develops quickly. Hunter Wood, same thing. These two guys are super old, so it's probably they're probably on their last legs as a member of this Rangers team, but we got some decent prospects waiting in the wings, of course. Real quick, I'll just cycle down. You know, we have Spencer Allard, uh, Spencer Howard, Kobe Allard. Uh, hopefully Glenn Otto can develop pretty quick. I'm a big fan of Glenn Otto. Uh, we have Josh Spores as a relief prospect down in the minors. And then, of course, Leiter, Cole Wynn. Um, you know, some of these guys look pretty good. I've got a reliever on waivers. I think I DFA'd him, so that's why I'm waiting on him. Uh, and then, you know, some other prospects down in the in AAA and everything, waiting for the roster to fix itself. We have like Anderson Tejeda. He's got A potential. Leody Tavares is a big-time prospect. Or a pretty good prospect, Jason Martin, uh, and then down in Double A, we've got guys like Josh Jung, Davis Wenzel, and uh, uh, Bubba Thompson, I guess. Um, but no, we got some good players down here. Really hoping they take steps forward and develop and become good players. But for season one, uh, what I want to do is because this is the post trade deadline roster, I have gone in to the sliders. And I am turning down trade frequency to zero. Or like to very near zero. Can I actually, wait, can I turn them off for season one? I might be able to turn them off season one. Let's see. General, advanced, 
Objections, vibration. This is our gameplay. Yeah, no. Okay, we're just going to turn trade frequency all the way down. This is the post-trade deadline roster, so I don't want any moves to be made. I don't want teams, like, trading their rental guys away. Like, I don't want the Giants trading Brian away or the Yankees trading Rizzo away. I just want to see Sim to the end and see how all the teams do in the standings um, after a full year together post-trade deadline. We are the 30th team in baseball. We are going to be bad. But, first overall pick. <laughs> so, I'm going to sim through. Uh, I'll probably just sim to the end of the season. Maybe show you guys the draft, and then we'll get into offseason. Number one, where I'm going to start throwing together the changes to make this Texas Rangers team actually good. First season in the books, and it was not good. 59 and 103 pretty tough uh we'll take a look at why we'll go through the team real quick but first just take a look at the standings braves on top nationals were about as bad as we were cubs were down there rockies were bad but interesting look at the standings the playoff picture is there you can take a look at that not really any surprises per se but real quick we could take a look at some of the awards or some of the league leaders maybe just like Yuri Yuri is an animal alright we didn't get any awards Yordan and DeGrom win MVPs Cole and DeGrom win Cy Youngs but yeah the team just was tough uh, not good didn't look very good. Uh, just tough offensively. Pitching didn't look good. Dane Dunning gets sent down. He always just gets rocked in this game. He got rocked hardcore. Real bad. Jordan Lyles also gets sent down. He was pretty bad. But it's his last season, so I don't care. Tyson Ross gets sent down, too. Also his last season, so uh, I don't really care. Uh, Kohei had a nasty season. 360 with a 1.2 whip. Fultonavich actually impressed me pretty much. Uh, a 115 whip, pretty crazy. Uh, and he had that like since the break. Uh, Allard got called up in September. He did great. Kyle Cody, not so great, but he got better. So we can't hate on that. Uh, John King and Spencer Howard ended up getting called up. Did they send down relievers? No. So they just called up. I don't know. They, they didn't they sent down hunter wood okay uh no that's not what i want to do so here we go uh let's see brett martin decent season leclerc was really bad spencer Patton was kind of bad matt bush not good spores got called up as well hernandez took over the closer role halfway through the season and he killed it cool and you know take a look at some lineups we got sent down Dahl, guzman Shirt and Apostle got called up and then sent back down. Culberson got sent down. <laughs> how did it? I just want to see how Apostle did. He did great in nine games. <laughs> His potential went up in the minors, so I called him up. But uh, let's take a look at the lineup here. Brock Holt, eh, pretty good. Decent. Delina De Shields did not do well. Nate Lowe had a rough year. Adolis Garcia had a rough year. Ended up with 20 home runs, but just not a good season. Willie Calhoun balled out, though. He had 31 homers as our designated hitter. Trevino wasn't great. Solak was an all-star. Um, so that was cool. And Kiner Falefa just always does really badly in this game. Uh, Kiner Falefa just stinks in the show. Eli White wasn't great. Played 100 games. Oh, my gosh. Jonah Heim was killing it at the break and then fell off. Abanya is not great. Curtis Terry get called up, didn't play. Same with Martin. Same with Tavares. Okay. Well, we're going to advance to the offseason. Does it say the Dodgers defeated the Angels? No retirements for us. The usual suspects. Retired, so now that we're in the new season, we can go to the sliders and turn the trades back up. I usually go about right there. 
two notches down, makes it pretty realistic, keeps the league from getting too crazy. Uh, exclusive free agents. All these guys can go. I think I'm going to let DeShields go. Do we bring back Brock Holt? I like Brock Holt. But do we bring him back? Where would he play? He's a third baseman. Are my draft picks here? My draft picks are here. So this guy was a draft pick, third baseman. He'll be good in like a season or so. My main draft pick was this guy, Alden Voorhees. Uh, ETA, like, 2023. Um, second baseman. Dece the discipline's not good, but his contact is pretty solid. Uh, we also drafted another second baseman, this guy, who's probably going to be a utility man. He's fast. He's a good fielder. I might try to convert him to the outfield if I can. Looks like he could be a decent outfielder. Uh, and then I just drafted, I think it was a couple of pitchers. Uh, I drafted this guy, Esteban Pacheco. And I drafted a reliever, I thought. Was he a starter? I could have sworn he was another pitcher. Maybe not. Oh well. Oh, it's this guy, Bradford Peters. But he's not going to be ready for like five years. So, yeah. Uh, exclusive free agents. Let's see. Where would Brock Holt play? The thing is, with... Uh, nope. With Shirt and Apostle's potential up... I could try to just play him and see what happens. I think that might just be what I do. Doll was bad. Sick. I don't know. I could uh, maybe. How much does Brock Holt want? 5.8 million. Oh, if I offer him 15 years, he'll take 2 million. Uh, 5.8 million. I'm going to offer him... I'll offer him 10.5. No. I'll offer him what he wants. 5.5. But I'm going to backload it. I'm going to toss a club option. And if he doesn't take it, then I'm not going to offer him. Our staff is fine. I'm actually probably going to fire some... Eh, actually, our, our staff really isn't that bad. So I might not fire guys off camera. To the offseason. Let's see. Brock Holt signed. Awesome. So everyone else is gone. Who is out there that we need? The big things we need are like shortstop. Because kind of for life is just not it. Uh... We could do with a left fielder, either a stopgap left fielder or a permanent left fielder, because I just want to keep Willie Calhoun at DH. I don't want him anywhere near the field. So we'll have to take a look around. Uh, there's some starters, but I don't know if I want to spend on pitching just yet. Relievers, maybe I'll grab like a reliever. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, catcher, I don't think I need. I can always just chill with the stopgaps for now. Rizzo is out there. Escobar is out there. Some some choices out there for sure. Don't really need second. Third base is weak. Let's see. Correa, Seeger. Tough choices out there for shortstops. Chris Bryant is out there as a left fielder. <laughs> so he didn't re-sign. Okay. Okay. So there's some decisions out there to be made. Um... I'll have to see what I can do to try to make this team a little bit better than what we ended up as last season. 40-man roster, Venasco I'll probably add. Looks like that might be it. Maybe Reagans, just to make sure no one takes him, although they probably won't. Um, arbitration, I'll probably keep Kiner Falefa as a bench piece. Fultonavich I'll definitely keep. Dahl I'm probably going to let go. 
Calhoun, I'm going to keep. Hicks, he's not going to play, so I'll let him go. Do I keep Matt Bush? That's going to be a tough one. How much does he want? He 900k. I might keep Matt Bush. Brett Martin, absolutely. Guzman, probably not. And everyone will get a contract. And yeah, definitely look for some free agents, maybe some trades. Try to make this team a lot better than we were last year. Okay, so season two is here. And we are still garbage. Um, and let me explain uh, why that is. I'll show you guys what we're looking for here. The basic gist of this offseason was that everyone I tried to sign ended up going somewhere else. Uh, except for James Hoyt. Let's go. Uh, premier free agent signing. Uh, I didn't. I went after one starting pitcher. Oh, and I signed Merrill Kelly after he got non-tendered by the D-backs. Brought him back to Texas. But I tried to sign um, Michael Pineda. He was not having it. Didn't want to come here. And I figured I wasn't going to go too nuts for a guy who's old. Um, so the rotation is going to look like this. Arahara, Fultonavich, Kelly, Allard. And I'm giving Howard the shot. Kyle Cody is going to be my long man. Uh, Victor Arano is a Rule 5 pick uh, in the from the Philly system. He looks great. So going to toss him back there and see what happens. Matt Bush is back, and James Hoyt got signed in free agency. And then lineup-wise, it's also didn't get any better. Um, yeah, Brock Holt's playing shortstop. I tried to sign Corey Seager after his... Because for some reason, he always hangs out in free agency forever, and no one signs him quickly. So the qualifying offer thing like expired. I put in a big offer for him, was in first place, and then he went to the Reds for less money. So that's why I have him. Um, my second option to play shortstop was Wilmer Flores. He signed with the... Yeah, I forget where he went, but he signed with somebody while I was waiting for Seager because I didn't want to sign both since I had brought Colt. So this is my lineup. Uh, the only new addition from outside of the team. Actually, there's two. Uh, we picked Adam Hazley in the Rule 5 draft. Um, hopefully he does well. We needed an outfielder and because I got rid of David Dahl and he was the guy. Um, if he develops well, then he'll be a good player. Uh, and then Nico Goodrum, I signed in the offseason to play shortstop to platoon with Brock Holt. Brock Holt's going to play short versus righties. Nico Goodrum is going to play short versus lefties. He had a good season last year, so he's here on a one-year deal. But, yeah, um, team's not great. <laughs> Maybe, you know, the free agent class after this year should be okay. It's just there really weren't guys, like, available that really helped me out. Like, Corey Seager, I would have taken only if I didn't have the qualifying offer. I wanted Trevor Story to bring him to Texas, but he ended up re-signing with the Rockies in the exclusive period for, like, nothing because he had an awful season. So that was that. The pitching really wasn't great. Season two here, I really can't afford to lose a draft pick, so I didn't sign anybody with a QO attached. Um, but, yeah, we'll make it through this season and then hopefully take some steps forward. The guys to watch for sure. I mean, Shirt and Apostle, Nate Lowe. Solak's definitely a guy to watch as well, and Calhoun, obviously. Hoping Leody Tavares does well, too. And then, so yeah, this season's basically another wash season. We have the number one overall pick. Hopefully we can build on whatever we've done since then, and some guys can take some steps forward, and we can get into the next offseason and just really start competing. That's the goal. We'll see what happens. Okay, here we go. Uh, the Rangers are actually doing okay. We're overperforming slightly. We're like three games out of a wild card spot. So I'm going to make kind of a ballsy move here. Uh, I'm going to shore up our rotation for the long term, get a guy who's really good and under team control for three years in the form of Zach Gallen. The Diamondbacks are in last place. Or no, second to last place, I think. Um, but Zach Gallen's on the trading block, and I'm not going to turn this down. Great pitcher, great at limiting hits. Walks per nine is a little low, but he's got a potential, so he will keep developing. Only 26, and the price really isn't that bad. I'm sending them to Koa Roby, C potential, Tyson Miller, 
see potential, 25 years old. The main centerpiece of this trade is Justin Foscue. He's old. He's only a 68 overall, and he's not developing as fast as he could be. He's just not my long-term plans. So I am going to ship Foscue over to the Diamondbacks, and we're going to grab Zach Gallen, bolster my rotation, and we're going to try to make a push at a playoff spot here in year two. So we ended up finishing 75 and 87. Uh, we kind of collapsed in the second half, just dropped a lot of games to division rivals. Uh, there's a couple sweeps by Houston and Oakland there in the final month of the season that kind of did us in. But it's still a big step forward for the team. Um, you can see the rest of the playoff picture here. And we can take a look there at the bracket. Real quick look at who moved up and down. Let's take a look here. Anderson Tejeda got called up in September. He got sent down. Andy Abanez got sent down. Not a great season from him. Eli White got sent down. Not a great season from him. And that's it for the lineups. So we can take a quick look uh, here. Brock Holt was still pretty good. I don't know if I'll bring him back. It all depends on what free agency looks like. Leody Tavares stepped forward, but... Not the best season. Calhoun, good season. Garcia, improved, but still not a good season. Nate Lowe had a great season. Shirt and Apostle was pretty good. He hit 30 bombs. I mean, can't complain about that. Solak had a pretty good year. I think he was an all-star again. Adam Hazley with a solid year. And Jose Trevino actually balled out for me. On the bench, Jonah Heim. Nico Goodrum had an awful year. Curtis Terry got called up. He didn't play. Jason Martin was pretty bad, and that's it for them. Pitching rotation, looks like John King. I called him up in September. He got sent down. Yeah, he got absolutely torched in the bullpen, and Matt Bush got sent down. He had a great year. He just got sent down because he's old, but he had a great season, and it looks like that's it for guys who got sent down, so we can take a quick look. Kohei had a great year. He's up to an 80 overall. Love to see that, although he did take a step back. He definitely cooled off down down the stretch to the end of the season. Fultonavich, another great season from him. Merrill Kelly, decent. Not great, not awful. Good, pretty good season from Colby Allard. A step back from his production in September, but couldn't expect that to continue. And Zach Gallen had a pretty good year. Did drop. He dropped and then went back up. <laughs> That's weird. Must have struggled a little bit when he first came over. Spencer Howard got moved over after the Gallen trade, but he looked good. Kyle Cody, kind of a rough year. He got sent down when Gallon came in then got called back up, it looks like. Brett Martin, pretty good year. Whips a little high, but good year, ERA-wise. James Hoyt had a tough year. He lost the closer role. Arano, potential went down. That's awesome. Love to see that. LeClaire had a pretty good year, but he's a guy you really cannot bank on because the walks per nine are just so volatile. Although a big step forward. We'll see. Spores got called up, didn't pitch. He'll probably be up next year. And Jonathan Hernandez won the closer spot. He cooled off a little bit towards the end, too, but still pretty good. Uh, we had no awards. Uh, no awards, no league leaders. Kind of just take a look at home runs there. Castellanos up there, I saw that. And we can you know, take a look at the pitcher stuff. Jack Flaherty's a monster. Real quick, we could cycle through the awards. Devers and Muncy MVP. I mean, you know, we still need to improve, but adding Gallon, a controllable starter, is going to be big for us down the stretch in the future as Corey Ray, who we signed in the offseason, then he got claimed in the Rule 5 draft away from me. That sucks. but <laughs> It happens. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll sim to the offseason here, take a look at the team. Dodgers defeat the Astros. That's boring. We're going to advance. Looks like we lost some coaches. Nobody retires. Okay. Brock Holt and Merrill Kelly both have team options. Do I keep Merrill Kelly? Or do I just stick with Fulty? fulty has been good. Or does Fulty even get a spot? That's tough to look at. What would my rotation be? Mel Kelly leaves. Could be Gallon, Arihara, maybe a guy in the off season. Allard and Howard.
Fulty was good. Man might have earned himself some money. We might just let him walk and sign him back. If we need to. I'm thinking same thing with Brock Holt. He's starting to go down. So I'm going to decline Brock Holt's option. As much as I love Brock Holt. And Kelly was a good stopgap. He ate innings for us. He had two shutouts. <laughs> he had two complete game shutouts. But I'm going to decline the team option there. And I'm not going to tender him arbitration. We do need to grab some coaches as well at some point during the offseason. None of my guys are getting qualifying offers. So there we go, into the offseason. We got a few guys to add to the 40-man. Yeah, Matt McLean I signed last offseason. Jack Leiter is 40-man eligible. That's what we like to see. He's up to a 77 overall, taking big steps forward. That's awesome. Love to see that. He should be up probably in September of next season. He might shoot up to an 80 by then. But yeah, he'll get added. Ty Madden will probably get added. Um, Matt McLean definitely just because he's a potential. Riley Thompson probably not. I just signed him as a depth piece. If someone takes him in the Rule 5 draft, a 60 overall pitcher, <laughs> more power to you, man. Arbitration. Everyone here looks like so far not Nico Goodrum, not James Hoyt, not Merrill Kelly, probably not Matt Bush. He's been putting up great seasons, but he's 37. I can't bank on him forever. Uh, Arano, probably Arano. Even though his potential went down, he's still a good pitcher. So, so yeah, it looks like pretty much everyone except for um, Goodrum, Kelly, Hoyt, and Bush. Is, now we have, we signed Corey Lee in the offseason. Sam Huff's also getting up there. But I just don't know how much I trust his hitting stats in the majors. And he's just not very good defensively. I think Jonah Heim might end up getting, like, DFA'd or something. Sam Huff can be the backup. Is Corey Lee? Corey Lee is Rule 5 eligible. We signed him in one of the off-seasons. So that's an interesting predicament. We have a lot of prospects who might be able to start making some noise. Um, as far as the draft last year is concerned, this is the only guy who really matters. Um, he was my number one overall pick. Has a good bat. I don't know if he'll feature. I was thinking about maybe kind of moving him to left field if I can, but I don't even know if he'll feature. The, re the draft was really shallow in terms of guys who have the ability to contribute like year one. George Schwartz, he looks okay. I think he's got like 79 potential. Uh, and then I also drafted a starter who might be pretty good, this guy, but I don't know how long it's going to take for him to develop. So just kind of drafted him as depth. Uh, everyone in there is probably going to get a contract. I mean, I might let some let a few guys go just to make things easier for me and free agency is this might be a big one the problem with the rangers is that we do not have a lot of money as we have quite a few pitchers here that are available Barrios didn't get a qualifying offer how much does he want 22 million that's big. Some relievers available. I'm not going to spend a ton of money on catcher. I don't see a point. Who do we have for shortstops? Nothing. It's tough out here, man. <laughs> it is tough out here. You want a long-term shortstop? Good luck, dog. Because you ain't going to get it. I don't know. Adam Frazier? He, wants, he only wants 16. But yeah, it's like, I want to, you know, you want to get a long-term shortstop. There's none of them available, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> Brutal. Oh, well, we'll have to take a look at free agency. I'm definitely going to try to fill up holes in this team. There's a lot of them. <laughs> um, there's still a good amount of them, I should say. Some guys took some steps forward. Some guys look good. Maybe guys I can hang my hat on, but changes definitely need to be made around here. And I'm going to do my best when I show you guys the team for year three. Trade time before season three. Uh, I am down bad for a shortstop. This, like the free agent classes and all this stuff have just been awful for me finding a shortstop. So I'm putting a little band-aid on it for now. I'm renting Paul DeYoung from the Cardinals. Uh, he has barely played the last two seasons. 
he'll be a decent stopgap. He'll play a serviceable shortstop. He'll hit some home runs for me. He'll at least be solid. He's a righty to have in the lineup, like a power hitting righty. That's really all I can ask for. So I'm going to send Curtis Terry and Ronnie Henriquez over to the Cardinals. Henriquez, I don't like his per nines. They're just not very good. Uh, walks and hit homers. And uh, Curtis Terry's good. I think he'd be a decent player. I just really don't see him fitting into this team at all. I just extended Nate Lowe's contract long term. So I'm going to send him over the Card- to the Cardinals. During the offseason, they were looking for first base and pitcher, I believe. So this hits both of those, and it gives me a shortstop at least for this year. If Paul DeYoung kills it, we might bring him back. And I also need a little bit of bullpen help, so I'm going to call up my boys in the central as well, the Pirates, because I want David Bednar. I've seen him go off in some sims. This roster loves David Bednar. I'm sending them Jonah Heim, Sam Walter, who's a B potential center fielder, and this Josh Stowers guy, minor league all-star. So you can see why they want him. And we're going to bring in Bednar to help out my bullpen. So for season three, uh, the team got a little better. Not sure how much. Hopefully we can improve a little bit just by the nature of my players doing better. Um, I have shored up a couple pieces of the team, but for the most part, I mean, we haven't made massive strides, and a lot of that has to do with just awful luck in free agency and stuff like that. I've just struggled to get good players to fill the holes that I have on this team. Um, So we've kind of just been trying to do my best, basically. Um... Starting out in the pitching rotation, uh, pitching rotation definitely got a lot better because Luis Severino was available in free agency, and he did not want like any money. So I've got him for the duration, four years, uh, seven, eight, and nine million dollars. Uh, his season wasn't great, but I mean, it's not too bad. He's got a potential, and he's twenty-eight years old. So if he can improve under contract, like under this contract, he he'll be immensely valuable. So we'll have Gallon, Severino, Arahara, Allard, and Howard getting the starts for us. And then John King is going to be my long man in the bullpen. And this is what the middle relief and late relief looks like with Brett Martin, Victor Arano, Josh Spores finally getting a shot up at the big league club. Jose LeClaire is still there. Hernandez in the setup role. And newly acquired David Bednar will be closing games for us just because I think he'll be able to develop in that spot. I've seen him go off in sims sometimes so i like him as the closer um if he struggles we can obviously just move hernandez back or something like that and then the lineup's interesting not quite sure how i want to do it um we just have a strange lineup uh i decided i'm going to lead off hazley paul de young i put in second uh his contact stats aren't great i know but he has decent discipline so i'm hoping he can overperform just based on the fact that the game has juiced his discipline stat uh, some guys will do that. If their discipline stat's high enough, they just hit like crazy, even though their uh, attributes aren't good. And, uh, you know, discipline's basically, I'll talk, I can talk about it more, but discipline's really the, like, one attribute that matters in this game if you're trying to figure out whether or not a hitter is good. So I've got him in second. I mean, I can always mess with it later during the season if someone's going off or whatever. Um, bumping Nate low up to three because his on base skills are better. And then Willie Calhoun's going to be. My cleanup guy, get him a lot of at-bats with guys on base, hopefully, with those three above him. I'm trying to move Adolis Garcia down because he's a good power hitter, but he just can't get on base. Leody Tavares bumped him down a little bit. Nick Solak is still down there. Shirt and Apostle I bumped down as well, uh, just because hopefully when if these guys can get on base in front of him, he can just clean it up. And then Jose Trevino is going to be the catcher versus righties. And then my left-handed lineup... Adam Hazley's still doing the leading off. I bumped Leody Tavares up to two um, and then against lefties because he has the better stats, and I trust his discipline more than Nick Solak. Nate Lowe's still hitting third. Calhoun's still hitting fourth. Garcia. DeYoung's all the way down there because his stats against lefties just suck. Um, Apostle down there as well, Solak, and then Sam Hoff is going to be my catcher versus lefties. I'm hoping that he can take a big step forward, uh, and then... You know, the other guys on the bench are Eli White still, Tejeda, Ibanez, and Martin. Tejeda finally making the team just because he's not going to get any better with the bat and his glove is fine. So he'll be a solid bench piece for me. He's never going to be a starting shortstop. He may even be a trade piece in future seasons, but that's where we're at. 
with the team. We're ranked 23rd. We have a we're in a tough division. I'm just really hoping the pitching can carry us, and if our hitters uh, put up home runs and some of the guys can improve, like I'm really looking for a big step forward this year from Nick Solak and Shirt and Apostle, because otherwise we're gonna have to start looking elsewhere. I've got young guys in the system who are getting to the point where they might be able to come up soon, uh, and. With the pitching staff, I'm hoping Allard and Howard can really stay consistent, and then this September is probably when we're going to crack the team with Jack Leiter. He'll probably end up taking over in that swingman role uh, for September, and then hopefully we can move him into the starting rotation by either you know, bumping one of these guys to the pen or by... Um, I don't know, making a trade. I don't, I don't really know who I would trade. Maybe one of these two guys if they don't do well this year. But I want to get lighter into the team sooner rather than later. It's just this season's tough because I really couldn't fill a lot of the holes that I wanted to um, just because free agency was kind of brutal. But our budget still looks fine. We only hit a um, $53 million payroll with player salaries because all my players are just dirt cheap. So with... LeClaire and DeYoung coming off the books this year. We can really do some stuff next year if good players actually become available. So I'm really hoping they do. But we're just going to go with Season 3, and we'll see what happens. So it's the deadline. We are in the midst of a tough division yet again. The Rangers, man, just cannot, for whatever reason, win in the darn division. So I'm making a trade. Uh, we need offensive production from left field. We need someone who can actually hit both set, both handed pitchers. So I'm going nuts. I'm um, packaging up Adolis Garcia. I'm done with him. He's out of here. I'm sending him, Anderson Tejeda, who is the centerpiece. He's just not, I mean, he's hitting okay this year. I'm never going to play him at short. He's not my starting shortstop next year. He's a good fielder, but I don't need him. So I'm going to send him away. And I'm also sending away this guy, Jack Blomgren, just a random uh, second baseman. And this package is going to grab me Juan Soto. Now, it does make it a little difficult because I don't have really like a bench depth person to replace Tejeda. Like Matt McLean is nowhere near good enough to call up right away. So I'll probably just have to sign somebody. But Juan Soto is joining the Rangers. And he's still controlled for two years. So, we'll see what happens. Alright. <laughs> it's an improvement. Season 3 is better. We missed by two and a half games in the wild card. Which is great, because we were sucking in the middle there. Uh, something about the Texas Rangers, man. They just do not like winning series against divisional opponents. Uh, they don't even like showing up for series against divisional opponents. Like, they just like to lose them all, and, I mean, like, every game. And at any time this team starts making, starts playing, like, 500 ball, they just, uh, what do you call it? They'll just instantly get swept, like, the next week. So, <laughs> But we're, we're trying to add firepower. I mean, Juan Soto is definitely going to be a huge step in the right direction for this team for sure. We'll see how he did towards the end of the season. But you can see there, uh, Oakland in the playoffs, Houston in the playoffs is the wild card, which is kind of crazy. But uh, we'll take a look real quick at the pitching rotation first. You get sent down. Jack Leiter gets sent down. And... Spores and Martin got sent down too. Really? How'd Leiter do in his debut? Yikes. Okay. <laughs> Not great. Yeah, I gave him a few starts. Brett Martin had a good year. Why are you sending him down? That's weird. And then Spores struggled a little bit. No walks per nine. He gave up a lot of walks. Happens. Major League Zach Allen had an absolutely disgusting season. 297 with a 119 ERA. Severino bounced back big time. Love to see that. He was struggling a little bit at the beginning. He started out slow and just killed it down the stretch. Kohei, eh, could be worse. We'll see what he wants in arbitration. You never know. Allard, great season. Love that from him. 
John King in the bullpen, not great, but better than last year. So I'll give him credit where it's due. Spencer Howard had a decent season. 3.87 ERA, 1.45 whip. Can't complain too much about that, especially coming from him. Arano, great season for him. Jose Leclerc did Jose Leclerc things. It's his contract year, so I'm probably just going to let him walk, try to move that money elsewhere. Hernandez had a good year. Bedner was a little tough. Uh, blew six saves. So maybe we move Hernandez to the closer role, or we get an actual proven closer this offseason. Tried last offseason, and it just didn't work. We'll see here who got sent up and down. Let's see who got sent down. Sam Huff got sent down. He did okay for a catcher, a lefty specialist catcher. Not going to complain about that too much. Uh, otherwise, doesn't look like too many changes were made. Rick Flores got sent down. What? I called him up in September because I needed a boost in the lineup at third base. He looked great. He was a 77, great discipline. So I was just like, screw it. I'm throwing him into the team. He had a 387 on base percentage. So he's going to be up next year for sure. Yeah, Shirt and Apostle was just like, eh. He was eh. Hit far less home runs. He got on base a little bit more, but not by much. See here, Eli White looks like he was pretty mids. Yeah, see, Shirt and Apostle, decent season. Like a step forward in the right direction for sure in terms of on base percentage, but he's not an everyday starter. Andy Abania is off the bench, not great. Corey Lee got called up, didn't play. Jason Martin is Jason Martin. Lineup now, Adam Hazley, potential goes up to A. Love that, even though he had a bad season. <laughs> he had a crappy season, his potential goes up. Can't complain about that. Paul DeYoung had a good year as the starting shortstop. May look to bring him back if there aren't any better options out there. I really don't think there are. So 33 homers from Paul DeYoung. Can't complain about that. Juan Soto, the trade acquisition, balled out. On base percentage down a bit, but he had to move from Washington to Texas. So can't complain. Nate Lowe, absolutely killing it in terms of like average. Home runs are a little low. I'd like to see him hit for more power. Calhoun, great season, 35 home runs. Leody Tavares, just a little bit of a step back. Don't like to see that. Nick Solak, another solid season, 20 homers. Good stuff from him. And Jose Trevino was pretty crappy. So we're really looking for... First of all, I guess Hazley needs to get more reps in my no DH lineup instead of Tavares. We might be looking for a center fielder and... Not a third baseman. We've got our we've got our guy down there, so we might just be looking for bullpen help and maybe a center fielder. Well, let's sim to the off season. We lost the AAA championship. That sucks. Dodgers defeat the Blue Jays, and we'll head to the off season. Lorenzo Cain retired a Yankee. I don't like that. All right. Scusa free agents. Paul DeYoung's probably going to want to get paid. $13 million actually isn't that bad. He wants less money? Absolutely. Oh, no, he wants more. No, he wants less. Sure. Here, have 14 I'll give him 14 You earned it. We'll backload it. Uh, I will toss a club option on it, though. Leclerc, I don't trust him. I'm just not going to keep him. He's way too up and down. We could try to get someone who's a little bit better. And we need a pitching coach and a farm director. I'll do that at some point. Let's see. Did Paul DeYoung resign? He did. Awesome. That's lineups. Whoops. Uh, 40 man. We'll add Jung. Probably not going to add Burke. I'll add Wenzel. He'll be a good bench piece for us, I think. Let's see if anyone else pops up that I need to add. Arbitration. Juan Soto's going to be pricey. Zach Allen will probably be a little expensive, but... We'll see here. Anybody not going to get it? Probably not Trevino or Ibanez. I think like these bottom four, probably like Martin down, aren't going to get arbitrary. Or like Trevino down. Everyone below Martin, I'm probably just going to let walk because Corey Lee is ready. Everybody's going to get a contract. 
Free agency. I don't need a starter. Relief pitching. Maybe a Joe Jimenez. That'd be a decent pickup. Six mil? That's not bad. Liam Hendricks is out here. That'd be a solid push for a, a closer. For like a premier relief arm, I can probably really only afford one. Alex Reyes might be an option, 14 mil. Hendricks probably wants a good amount, but low years. Or we could kind of grab some of these guys and try to... Ooh. Hmm. We could definitely make something happen for sure with relievers. We could get Roberto Asuna. Man. I'll pass, thanks. Uh... <laughs> Any, I don't really think we need catcher help. We have Corey Lee and Sam Hoff. They'll be fine. I'm more worried about the premier positions. I think Solak is a fine second baseman. He's not going to get on base like crazy, but he's good for 20 bombs. I'm fine with that. Short stops. No one really stands out, so I'm glad we picked back up uh, DeYoung. Mondesi is just not good enough to be an everyday shortstop, in my opinion, in this game. In real life, he's a great great player, fun to watch. In this game, he's not very good. As much as I would like Rafi Devers, we've got our third baseman of the future, I think. Oh, he only wants $15 million. But, no, nah, I think we have our first baseman of the future. We've got Soto now. Soto and Willie Calhoun. Like, maybe a center fielder to, like, really drive this team home. Have, like, Leody Tavares be a bench guy for us but we'll figure it out we're going into season four we finally finished over 500 right we were 82 and 80 we're 82 and 80 we we're 82 and 80 next season playoffs season four we're getting ready to go here I made some moves i think i've made a pretty solid push to try to get this team over the hump and really get into the postseason starting this year and next year uh, you're going to see some pretty big moves, i got to say. I think this team looks really good. You can see 11th in baseball. We don't, you know, we're not number one in anything, but I think we're just a good team all around, and hopefully we can really make a push to do some damage in the playoffs this year. Uh, first thing is the pitching rotation. That's the big story right there, Jack Leiter being up. I haven't decided how I'm going to order this rotation yet, uh, we're obviously going to have Zach Gallen at the top uh, just because his per nines are solid. Severino's probably going to stay as my two, even though his season was good just because Gallen's season last year was great. I don't know how I'm going to order this. I might. It's probably going to be something like this, and then either Howard or Leiter is my five. Um... I haven't decided yet. I'll make a final decision and really throw somebody out there, you know, before I start the season. Because I still have to do some housekeeping with like signing minor leaguers and everything like that. But I think it's going to be either Howard or Leiter uh, taking over that role. Howard has slightly better clutch, so maybe Howard will be my reliever, and then Jack Leiter is going to be my five in the rotation. Uh, and then the bullpen, of course, uh, we signed Alex Reyes in the off season to a pretty fat contract. Our budget's a little tight, I'm not going to lie. The budget's getting a little tight, but we can definitely let some guys go and free up money. We've only got one year left in the rebuild, so if I was actually trying to run this team, I'd be way more concerned about finances, but I can push it a little bit. Uh, we also signed Joe Jimenez to a contract in the offseason, so really bolstering the bullpen here. Uh, David Bedner, of course, from the trade. Last season, so the bullpen looks strong. I'm hoping these guys can really perform. Arano and Bedner and Martin are all guys who I think are going to overperform their overalls. Big changes as well in the lineup. You'll see here the right-handed lineup. We signed Chris Taylor uh, in the offseason. Now, you remember the center fielders that were available were Bellinger. Uh, there was Bellinger, there was uh, Harrison Bader, and there was Chris Taylor were the main center fielders. Um, I didn't want to get Bellinger because... He was going to be super expensive, and he's a lefty. I've got way too many lefties at the top of the lineup, so I needed a right-hander to break up the, the lineup. So obviously I was going to go after Harrison Bader, but Harrison Bader was a problem for a couple reasons. Number one, he wanted a max deal, whereas Chris Taylor is slightly under a max deal. Actually, 
a good bit under a max deal. Um, and I can have him for a shorter term, whereas Harrison Bader... So the second problem was that Harrison Bader was dead set... When I was originally bidding on him, he was dead set on going to the Mets. Uh, I offered him a seven-year max contract, and he still wanted to go to the Mets for a five-year max contract. So I ended up just uh, giving up on Bader, and he ended up actually going to the Padres for... I forget how long. I think it was a max deal. Let's see. He It was a max deal for one, two, three, four, five, six years. So he wanted to... Like, he didn't want to go to a contender. It wasn't a thing on his free agency page. But apparently, the Rangers just weren't good enough. He didn't want to come here. So we ended up... We got into a bidding war for Chris Taylor. It was, like, between us and the Cubs. And the Cubs kept running it up. Um, and eventually, But eventually, we won out in the sweepstakes. So we got Chris Taylor. And the reason why I gave up on Bader and focused on Taylor is because of this right here. The, uh, the no DH lineups, because I'm a... You know, I'm an old-fashioned, I'm a fuddy-duddy, and I play with the DH on auto, so no DH in the National League. We need to play Willie Calhoun in the field when we play in the National League. And I am not benching Nick Solak uh, for Willie Calhoun. I want Nick Solak to get reps at second base. I want him to play second base. So um, I decided to grab Chris Taylor because Chris Taylor can play in the infield uh when we're playing in the National League because he has the positional flexibility. So, like, Chris Taylor can play third in the lineup against righties, uh, and Chris Taylor plays... I have him playing short right now. Uh, depending on how Rick Flores, the rookie, does at third base, I might end up moving Taylor to third in this lineup, too, and having DeYoung jump back in uh, when we're playing interleague. But the lineup here, yes, we have Chris Taylor hitting second because he's a good on-base guy. Hazley's still our leadoff guy just because of his contact and vision. His discipline's not great, but I'm hoping he can take a step forward there. I got Nate Lowe in the three-hole, Juan Soto hitting cleanup because he blasted 45 home runs last year or something stupid like that. Uh, Juan Soto didn't end up signing an extension in the offseason, so we are sweating a little bit about that, keeping Juan Soto for the last year of the rebuild. I might just have to pay him, bite the bullet, and get a little uncomfy finances-wise. Willie Calhoun's down at five. Paul DeYoung gets to bump down to six so he can just be a home run guy home runs and uh, getting on base and then Solak Flores the rookie at third base and then Corey Lee I'm playing Flores at third base because his attributes just look amazing he looks like a guy who's going to overperform his attributes I mean you saw what he did last year in you know 27 games he had a 387 on base percentage this guy's clearly a beast might end up being a future leadoff guy I love this guy I love the fact that we drafted him one of my favorite prospects I've ever drafted right here just because he's a prototypical third baseman. I love Rick Flores. And then Corey Lee is up. He is my everyday catcher. And then on the bench, uh, we have... I ended up keeping Jason Martin. He was cheap with arbitration, and I figured might as well have a good defensive backup along with Leody Tavares, who is a backup in outfielder. Leody Tavares would be my fourth outfielder. Jason Martin's kind of like a pinch runner, fifth outfielder type guy. Sam Huff's still my backup catcher. He's not getting reps he's just gonna play when Corey lee is tired but he's here i figured might as well keep him instead of signing somebody else shirt and apostle on the bench as well backup corner infielder first and third power guy off the bench just good to have he he hits dingers so he's just good to have off the bench and then needed another middle infielder uh didn't want to call wenzel up just yet wenzel or jung one of the two will probably be up next year so i figured why not bring brock holt back for a season Six and a half million, but, you know, bring Brock Holt back to Texas. He balled out in San Diego last year. I think he was starting. <laughs> but he's just going to be chilling on the bench for me this year, uh, you know, bringing him back home to Texas. Hopefully we can get him a ring. But uh, if not, this season is his last because we have the guys waiting in the wings. But, uh, yeah, that's the team that we've got going on this year. We are 11th in baseball. Athletics are 15th, Astros are still 5, Mariners are 22, and the Angels are 20th. So I feel like we should be able to beat three of the five teams, or three of the four other teams in our division. The Astros are going to be tough, but their lineup hasn't been as good as it has been. Like, obviously they have Jordan, the guy's an animal, but they have, like, Jordan and Bregman, but, like, Witt's not that great in Sim. Kyle Tucker isn't that great in Sim. 
Oh, he actually might be in this roster. Yeah, he okay. They juiced his discipline in this roster. So the Astros are a little scary, but they have Kevin Kiermeyer. Like this guy's not gonna hit. And uh, what do they have for pitching? Let's see. Uh, do, 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 real quick. A decent rotation, but nothing crazy. Ours technically is better, I think. And our bullpen's much better. They're running Brian Abreu and Andre Scrub. I think we can take something. I think we can take some games off these guys. We have a great pitching staff, very good contact hitting lineup. But I think we're better at a lot of the important metrics here than the other teams in our division. So this, I'm hoping this is the year where the Rangers can actually buckle down, be consistent, beat divisional opponents, and finally get us a run at the postseason. Ladies and gentlemen, the Rangers have won the division. We won the division facing Chicago in the AL Division Series. This is great. I love this. So the 2024 playoffs, we're going to be in it. You can see right there, 93-69. and 69. Nice. Won the division. We started out a little slow, but we got hot down the stretch. Blue Jays won 111 games. Adios mio. All right. We had some league leaders. Let's see what happened. Juan Soto went off. We extended him, by the way. We signed him to a two-year extension, so he will be back for next year. Uh, can't guarantee how good the finances are going to be looking after it's all said and done, but we have 46 home runs for Juan Soto. Just disgusting. The man's a machine. Led the league in OPS, too, which is... Something that I like to see, for sure. And we had some awards. Hopefully Juan Soto won MVP. He won the Hank Aaron Award. And he won American League MVP. Let's go, Juan Soto. Barely beating out Vlad Guerrero Jr., who just went absolutely stupid. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Vlad Jr. and Juan Soto. That's, that's a fun rivalry right there. Edwin Rios, NL MVP. Okay. No, wait, just one second. Wait, just one second. Also, Jacob deGrom out here winning Cy Young's at 35 years old. His, like, 19th friggin' straight Cy Young or something like that. Bo Bichette leads the league in batting average. Matt Barnes, delivery man of the year. Okay. Bailey Ober, rookie of the year. Yeah, you'll notice a distinct lack of Rangers in the rookie of the year running, and that's because all of our... Our third base problem is still a problem. Um... We'll see here. Pitching rotation first. Pitching absolutely dogged this year. Just dirty. Uh, you can see there. Did anyone get sent down? Someone did. No. They just brought up an extra pitcher. So one of my position players got sent down. But yeah, Zach Allen, dirty. Uh, Luis Severino's contract, I mean, it's paying for itself. He's probably our ace at this point. Jack Leiter had an okay first season. I can't really complain about that. Kohei Arahara was great this year, and Spencer Howard was dogging it in the bullpen. Had to move him to the starting rotation because Colby Allard kind of uh, kind of pooped the bed a little bit this year. So it's fun. I mean, it's there's uh, what do you call it? It's friendly competition in this rotation. You know, guys are guys are constantly pushing each other to be better. So that's what I love to see. If you're you know if someone else is working harder in the in the bullpen than you are in the rotation, you guys are swapping. Is what it is. David Bednar with a great breakout season for us. That's what I expected when we traded for him. Victor Arano, potential backup to B. Let's go. Great season from him. Brett Martin, doing Brett Martin things. Joe Jimenez, great ERA, suspect whip. Looks like he walked a lot of guys. Yeah, four walks per nine. Not great, but he didn't he didn't get touched by the long ball at all. So can't complain about that season. Jonathan Hernandez. With a good season. Josh Spores didn't pitch. Alex Reyes had a tough year. Uh, he was much worse at the beginning of the year. He just got beat by the long ball, it looks like. But the FIP was good, so he'll he'll bounce back, I'm hoping. Uh, we'll have to figure out what's up with Josh Spores. Uh, we'll see. Did anyone get sent down? So I ended up calling up Alden Voorhees in September. He got sent down. He didn't do too hot. Anyone else get sent down? 
Looks like Brock Holt gets sent down just because he's old. He had a decent season off the bench. Jason Martin gets sent down probably because he had a good year. What the heck happened there? Why'd you send him down? Probably because they want us to carry an extra pitcher for the postseason. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Hazley's potential back down. <laughs> that was fun while it lasted. But he had a decent year. Not a leadoff guy, but there he is. Uh, Chris Taylor might have to be a leadoff guy, which means I guess we need a two-hitter. I don't know. Uh, Chris Taylor, great year. From him at center field, that's what we needed. Put that in our lineup. Nate Lowe, good season, 23 homers, got on base. Juan Soto, absolute machine, 412 on base percentage, 306 average, 46 home runs. Willie Calhoun, OBP went down, but the power was good. I can't really complain about that. He played every game, too. Nice. Uh, Nick Solak had a great breakout season. At second base, 340 on base percentage for Nick Zolak. Who is this guy? Uh, Paul DeYoung had a rough year this year. Go figure. Pay the man. He sucks. Um, hoping he'll be better next year. But you know, imagine how much better our team would have been if all of our guys were actually playing well. Uh, Corey Lee, 13 homers. Decent season as a catcher. Three wins above replacement. Can't complain about that. Yeah, the, the third base carousel was a little rough this year. Shirt and Apostle didn't do too hot in limited time. Josh Jung came up for a little bit. He didn't do too hot either. Uh, I thought about trading for a rental, but figured I'd just let it ride. Uh, Sam Huff, decent off the bench as a backup catcher. Davis Wenzel ended up getting called up at the end of the season, along with Kanan Smith. Lodi Tavares, bench outfielder, is what it is. Let's mess with the postseason roster a little bit. Uh, who do I want up here? Uh, I'm going to stick with these guys as my pitchers. I will think about, yeah, our prospects went dumb this year. Like, everyone's potential going up. Uh, I don't think I want Alden Voorhees on my roster. Yeah, Rick Flores lost potential. Didn't do too hot. Um, hmm. Josh Jung ended up doing pretty well down the stretch in AAA. I might add him, honestly. You know what? I'm going to try him. I'm going to do the thing where you uh, have the guy make his debut in the postseason. I'm also going to add Martin back and remove Kanan Smith. Or, hmm, or should I just have Brock Holt play third for me? Hmm. I'm still going to carry Brock Holt. We'll figure it out. I'm going to remove spores. I don't need the extra pitcher. And then, so that'll be the rotation. I'm going to stick with Gallon as my one. But I want Howard to be my three. Har Har is my four. Lighter is going to be my five. There we go. And then lineups. I just need to figure out who I want to play third. Because nobody really did considerably well. Sixty-five, sixty-five. Maybe we'll platoon. Yeah, I'm gonna run Brock Holt at third base. I think. Against righties. And I'm going to run Josh Jung against lefties. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? All right. So we're going to the postseason. Game one against Chicago. Zach Gallen versus Noah Syndergaard got traded. He was in Oakland, wasn't he? We win 5-4. Win 11-1. Spencer Howard shut it down against Dylan Cease. Yes, sir. And now we have to face the juggernaut Toronto Blue Jays. We should be able to start Gallon again. So we're going to do that. We're just going to run the same rotation. Let me just check just to make sure. I'm just checking stamina. Yep, we're all good. Zach Gallon can start game one against Nola. Gotta love sweeping, man. Sweeping is fun. 
Game one, Nola versus Gallon. We win eight to four. Severino versus Flaherty. Flaherty? Wait, what is their pitching staff? Hang on. Hang on. What is happening? Dude. <laughs> Jack Flaherty, Aaron Nola, Nate Pearson, Alec Manoa. Oh my gosh. Their bullpen sucks though. Their bullpen's trash. All right. We just have to get the starter out of the game. Jack Flaherty threw a CGSO though in his first start, so not a guarantee. Game two, nine to nothing. Blanked. The boys are bopping. Alec Manoa versus Spencer Howard. That's another one. Kohei versus Nate Pearson. Put it away, dog. We lose that one. Uh, I'm going to give... Uh, uh, what do I do here? I think you have to throw... I think I have to throw Gallon. Yeah, I have to throw Gallon here. Mm. Try to win it at home. We're up 3-1. Like, we still have two games if Lighter goes here. I'm going to give it to Jack Lighter here. And we get blanked. Okay, Zach Gallon versus Jack Flaherty. We win it. Let's go. We are facing the Mets in the World Series. Severino versus DeGrom. This is the main event, boys. Let's just see what their pitching staff looks like. I'm curious. I'm just going to take a quick look here. DeGrom means... Oh, they get the glitch. Kumar is getting rocked in the postseason, though. Not a good sign. Oh, we, we have to have a Kumar versus Jack Leiter postseason game. I need it. Jacob Junis, their closer. Severino versus DeGrom. Let's go. We win it. Howard versus Means... We take the L. David Peterson versus Kohei Arhara. Another loss. Ah. Oh, I want to start. I'm starting Gallon. I'm starting Gallon. I just have to check the stamina real quick to make sure Gallon can throw. Gallon's. Yeah, we're starting Gallon because I want Jack Leiter and Kumar Rocker to face each other. The storyline is absurd. Zach Gallon is going against Joey Lucchese. We take the win. 2-2, swing game, Kumar Rocker versus Jack Leiter, the Vandy boys, the teammates, the draft partners going at it, and Jack Leiter takes the W. Severino against DeGrom for the World Series, and we lose. Okay, this isn't fun anymore. <laughs> um, we got a quick manage. It's game seven. It's game seven. I got to get in there. I got to get in there. We got to throw Howard. I'm wondering if maybe there's like a... Yeah, Josh Jung has had three ABs. Okay, here we go. We're on the road, I think, too, right? Or no, are we at home? Oh, we have a DH. I guess we're at home. Yep, Spencer Howard. Gotta go. It's all on him, man. It's all on him. This is a crazy series. We take those, getting on base by any means necessary. Advance the runners. Big spot for the kid. He grounds out. This is just an all-defense game so far. Like, what is happening? Mets finally hit. Ugh. Three runs. It's tough, but it's not DeGrom. Juan Soto gets us on the board. Willie Calhoun goes back-to-back. Nick Solak ties the game in the fourth. Three straight solo, or not back to back to back, but three solo jacks in the inning puts us back in. Spencer Howard, I need like one more from you, man. It's all hands on deck. The boys are getting on base. Chris Taylor strikes out. Needed him to really set the tone there. Two outs, Juan Soto, runner on third. This is your spot. This is why we paid you. Fielder's choice. I think I'm going to go to the bullpen here. It's all hands on deck. We do have Arahara out of the pen as well. What do we have? Right, left, right. With Alonzo coming up. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm going to go to Jimenez here. He walks the first guy. Gets out of it. Back up. John Means still going. Single. For Calhoun, strikeout for DeYoung, Solak flies out, 
Josh Young grounds out. We're going to go to the pen again. I got lefty, righty, and then Lindor. What is it that Lindor hits better? I think it's lefties, right? Either way, it is the seventh. I'm going to go to David Bednar here. He gives up a leadoff double to Conforto. Walks McNeil. Got to get through Thomas Nito, and he does. Beautiful stuff there. Corey Lee on John Means. Nope, Scott Oberg comes into the game. Scott Oberg's got to be old. 33, okay. He's one of those guys you always think is like ancient. Adam Hazley grounds out. Chris Taylor flies out. Eighth inning, we're going back to the pen here. Uh, I wish I could see Reyes' stats in the postseason. I feel like... Uh, you got to trust him here. I'm going to Reyes. Line out, single for Luis Guillorme. Walks Dom Smith. Need to get through Mark Conforto here. This is a big spot. And he does it. Strikes him out. Absolutely. And the heart of the order is up against who? Defend no pitching change? Nate Lowe with a leadoff single. Fly out for Juan Soto. Needed that. Come on, guys. Ground out? Ah. I think we have to... We have to... And that's a home run from Reyes. Damn it. Oh, this is going to hurt, man. Solak, Josh Jung, Corey Lee. It's all on you guys. Jacob Junis, the closer, coming in. He's got a 1-4-2 ERA. Popped up from Solak. Do we have a hitter we can go to here? I don't think so. We might just have to let the kid let the kid go for it. But he's 0 for 6. I'm going to let Apostle get a shot here. He singles. Corey Lee. Single again. Turns the lineup over. Adam Hazley. Ties the game in the bottom of the ninth. And there's a runner on third. Do we go for the walk-off sack fly? I think we do. We have to. Chris Taylor for the sack fly. He strikes out. Nate Lowe, please. He strikes out. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That's insane, though. That's insane, though. Uh, do I pull in Hernandez? Got to pull in Hernandez here. I can't let Reyes go again. He gave up a homer. Get through Conforto. He does it. Juan Soto, Willie Calhoun, Paul DeYoung in the bottom of the 10th. No extra inning runner. And a walk-off home run for Juan Soto. Wins the Rangers of the World Series here in 2024. The Rangers win 5-4. to four. Wow. I wish I had watched that game in real life. Ha <laughs> ha. Juan Soto with a walk-off homer in the bottom of the 10th. And the Rangers are World Series champions. Soto's got to be World Series MVP. He's also playoff MVP. So Juan Soto, the two-time World Series champion, once with Washington. Now with the Texas Rangers. Brock Holt also getting a ring. Josh Jung getting a ring. Hey, my man. Jack Leiter. Wins the Battle of Vandy. There were so many good storylines in that World Series. Holy cow. And now we get to go to the offseason to try to repeat. No retirements. No one in the Hall of Fame this year. Willie Calhoun and Brock Holt are exclusive free agents. This is where it gets interesting. Oh, he wants like nothing. He wants $4 million? <laughs> Say no more, buddy. I'm not giving you five years, though. Even if we just have one more left. The most I would give him in a rebuild like this is maybe like three. I'll give him 5.2 million with a club option attached. Brock Holt can go. And we need some staff. I don't even remember who my manager was, so there's no point in me trying to hire him back. Definitely wasn't that guy. Actually, I kind of want that guy now that I'm just looking at him. I'll boost the offer up a little bit. Not that much. Holy cow. You think I made him money? No, no, he's probably not going to take it, but whatever. Yeah, 
All right, I'll just do the staff off camera. Uh, we ended up getting our boy back. Willie Calhoun is back. We have a lot of guys to add. Cole Wynn. And we have an interesting fight with our finances. $74 million available. We have a few guys in arbitration. Do we? Yeah. <laughs> Zach Gallen, Jonathan Hernandez, Spencer Howard. This may be Kohei's last year with the team, just based on finances. Martin might be finally done. We're going to have to make some choices this year. I said it last year. We're going to do it again. Everyone's going to get a contract. And we, I don't really think we can afford to make a splash. But, I mean, we already won the World Series. We might be able to grab some guys and run it back. Try to get some cheap options. But, you know, we got, we got the ship. So now it's just all about trying to keep it trying to keep it going i mean if i come in you know if i come in with the same team as the one i just won the world series with then i would consider this offseason a success especially if our young guys keep developing and improving here on opening day final season uh team looks pretty much the same uh, i didn't make too many changes because we're up pretty close to the budget and like i said if i'm coming into the season with the same team you know, even, you know, slightly better than the team that I won the World Series with last year, then I am going to be happy with that. Just a few little things that I moved around, you know, changed around to make our team a little bit better. Uh, pitching rotation, you're going to notice Kobe Allard's missing. Uh, he had options, and John King doesn't. So I want to see what John King can do. So I sent Colby Allard down to AAA. He had only one option used, so I sent him down to AAA. John King's going to get a shot there uh, in the bullpen. I think that walks per nine is going to play. He's hopefully going to do pretty well. But the rotation, it's the same. Severino, Gallon, Howard, Arahara, and Jack Leiter is going to round out the bottom. Bullpen is exactly the same. You know all the boys. Hopefully Alex Reyes can bounce back. Lineup is pretty much the same. couple tweaks here and there. Uh, Adam Hady, whoa, had a stroke. Adam Hazley is now the primary uh, leadoff man in all the lineups. I think by accident he was not. Uh, I think by accident I had Leody Tavares starting against right-handers with no DH. Adam Hazley is now my primary leadoff man, just because he's got good vision and good contact. His discipline's not great, but I don't really have a better leadoff man, uh, so it's gonna be him for now. Uh, I could maybe move guys around, but, yeah, we'll see. Uh, you know the drill. Chris Taylor, Nate Lowe, Juan Soto, Willie Calhoun. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, I am starting Josh Jung at third base. Uh, he was my guy in the playoffs. I think I said, you know, like, make his debut in the playoffs. I just meant, like, you know, how some teams are starting to bring up rookies to get their first real action in the postseason. That's what I did with Josh Jung. Didn't see his whole stat line, but he didn't impress in the World Series, but he was only 24. Now he's 25. I, I like his stats enough, especially his glove, that I'm going to start him at third. Let Shirt and Apostle walk to clear that up, um, to clear the spot. Davis Wenzel is going to be up. He's going to be on the bench for us, kind of a utility middle infield guy. Uh, Sam Huff, again, backup catcher. Uh, Kanan Smith, I don't know how to pronounce the hyphenated name, so Kanan Smith is going to be on our bench as well. Leody Tavares, another, you know, fourth outfielder. And Alden Voorhees is getting the call up. Uh, his bat's pretty good. His discipline's not great. Um, I'm not going to start him over Solak because Solak had a great year last year. But, you know, if I was to continue Solak's in the last year of his deal, I'd probably just throw Voorhees in there at second base and have a controllable option because uh, I don't know how, how much money Nick Solak's going to cost. And, you know, we still have Paul DeYoung under contract for two years. We still have Juan Soto under contract for another year, Calhoun for another few years, Taylor for another year. So if this thought experiment was to continue, Alden Voorhees would probably be my starting second baseman going forward. He's definitely not a leadoff type because of that discipline, but I like the contact. I like the vision. Uh, I like the speed. He'll, at the very least, I hope he gets used as a pinch runner. So 
Uh, yeah, that's the team. I'm going to be a little proactive as far as pitching is concerned. Like, if John King's not doing well, Colby Allen's coming back up. Or, you know, if someone else in the rotation isn't doing too hot, then Colby Allen's coming up. Um, we're going to be kind of ballsy about or not ballsy about it. I'm going to be a little hands-on with the, the team, moving guys up and down, because I want to repeat. You know, we're coming in with the same team. Uh, the Astros got a lot better. They added some guys in free agency. So... If we can get a wild card spot, I'm fine with that. If we can win the division again, that would be even better. But it's the final season. We already got the World Series. Anything that happens after this is all a bonus. We played the, one of the best Game 7s of all time. For now, it's just you know see how the boys can do, see how the guys improve, see how the young guys develop. Final season over, and down the stretch, we stumbled into a wild card spot. Uh, granted... The Astros were hot all season, but we really slowed down towards the end of the season, and yeah, we we stumbled into an all uh, into a wild card spot. We just ran out of gas down the stretch. Uh, I don't know what it was. The boys just weren't feeling it. Ended up tying with the Angels. Uh, we were still, you know, relatively comfortable with a three game lead in the wild card, but it should not have been that close. We just we had a rough. Uh, Really rough September, and it came back to bite us because we were hot. We were hot towards the middle of this season, but it happens. We can take a look at the standings here really quick. No team really ran away with it, which is surprising because the Blue Jays are building an absolute machine. I don't know if they lost some guys, but they kind of went off. Let's see. Spencer Howard leads the league in wins. Juan Soto leads the league in hits. Nothing really happening. Big time. I mean, in terms of anyone going off, Joey Gallo's a royal. <laughs> uh, uh, it's just, it was tough. I'm surprised we didn't get Joey Gallo wins MVP. Okay. <laughs> Joey Gallo and Pete Alonzo are your MVPs. But yeah, we, it just, we fell off, man. We fell off hard. So, Josh Jung, second in Rookie of the Year voting. His season was so much better. Oh, I'm not going to spoil it unless Kierstead. Yeah, his season was better. Kierstead just hit more home runs. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, the like I said, the boys started out hot. Boys started out hot. Some guys regressed. Some guys got better. Just a weird, weird season for sure. You see Severino step back ERA-wise. Who got sent? Kohei got sent down. He was nasty. He definitely slowed down down the stretch, gave up a few extra runs, but I don't see why you're sending him down there. Doesn't make sense at all. Victor Arano gets sent down. He didn't even do poorly. He's just falling off. So it's definitely his last year on the team, but, I mean, he didn't suck. Uh, let's see. Severino. You can see there, I mean, Severino did okay. Zach Allen had a bad year. Spencer Howard was solid again. Uh, Colby Allard. Put in the work down in the minor leagues. Jack Leiter was struggling. Colby came up and got it done. John King, like I said, I mean, walks per nine, if your walks per nine are high, the guy's going to dominate. Uh, I mean, and that's what that's what happened with John King. Yeah, you can see Jack Leiter struggled pretty bad. Justin Slatten did pitch. Jonathan Hernandez. Yeah, Jonathan Hernandez had a rough year too. Rough year in his walk year. Hate to see it. Brett Martin's a goon, though. Brett Martin's a beast. Joe Jimenez figured it out. David Bednar with a good season. And Alex Reyes had a monster year in the back end of the bullpen. Probably should have had some delivery man of the year consideration. I'm surprised he didn't. 44 saves. Wasn't even on the list. Lineups. Anybody get sent down? Davis Wenzel got sent down. He was on the bench. He didn't have a great year. Uh, Rick Flores got called up in September. He didn't. He played in one game. He was a defensive substitution. Didn't register a stat. His stats were good in AAA, but just wasn't doing it. Nobody else got sent down. Uh, whoops. Let's see. Chris Taylor is starting to fall off, but put together a good year. Did I club option him? I did not. Okay. Well, that's tough. <laughs> that's tough. It's the last year. Who cares? Willie Calhoun. Yeah, I ended up shifting the lineup around to try to get hot down the stretch, and it didn't really work. Willie Calhoun, though, great season for him. Nate Lowe with another great season. Juan Soto's a beast. Nick Solak's just killing it. 
Adam Hazley had a rough year again. It's probably his last season with the team if we were continuing. Josh Young, yeah, monster rookie year. Almost 30 homers as a rookie. 270, 327, 492 slugging. Great season for him. Paul DeYoung kind of got it together. Decent OBP. I don't really know what was up with him. He was hot and cold. I mean, look, Sam Huff, great season as a bench, excuse me, bench catcher. Voorhees was tough off the bench. He didn't play a lot. Kenan Smith, okay. Leody Tavares was okay. And yeah, that's that's the team. So we're going to get the roster all set and ready to go here. Uh, I think we have to, we have to send down Jack Leiter, unfortunately. I just, I, we can't throw Jack, <laughs> we can't throw Jack Leiter in the playoffs this year. He got, he got his time to shine. We're also going to add Arano back and remove Justin Slatten. David Garcia looks like an animal at this point. We have such a good farm system in this sim, it's kind of crazy. Uh, who else do we have to bring up and send down? I think for the playoffs, not that this kind of stuff matters, but for the playoffs, I will carry Bubba Thompson as my backup outfielder because he's got speed. If I was actually doing a you know game, uh, I would you know if this is a real game, and then we're also going to kick Josh Spores off the roster. I will add Davis Wenzel back on. Spores off. And we're good to go. So our pitching rotation, I mean, that's not good. Get Kohei in there. Do we want <laughs> do we want John King to get playoff starts? I don't really know how we're going to fit him into the team. Maybe move him over for Arihara, make him our five. Spencer Howard might have earned the two spot, honestly. I'm thinking about this way too much, by the way. Yeah, Spencer Howard's earned the two starter spot over Zach Gallen. But Luis Severino is going to be our guy still. Make or break, wild card game. Oh, we won the championship. Uh, or was that we made it to the championship? <sighs> okay. Um, I'm going to see if I can quick manage it. Why not? Why not? We'll see if we can beat them in sim. Griffin Canning is their guy. I'm going to see if I can make it fast. Severino going to town. Mike Trout. Oh, Mike Trout in the postseason. Two-run homer for Corey Lee. Love to see that. Rangers get on the board early. Off of Griffin Canning, another two-run homer. Juan Soto will never pay for a drink in the city of Arlington ever again as he has Monty Grandal from the nine spot. It's a two-run homer. Their team's kind of dirty. I mean, a lot of these guys are older, so they're probably, like, worse. But, I mean, if you put this team together, like, right now in the MLB, that team's disgusting. <laughs> Corey Lee is just having a day. Chris Taylor can't bring him home, though. Severino's definitely shaky, but he's doing it for us. Juan Soto gets on again. Fielder's choice. Gets the out at second base. Severino's still firing. And Giffen Canning out early. Joe Ross into the game. Severino, I think, has two more in him. Yes, um, I was going to say maybe one more in him, actually. Corey Lee is just a monster today. Do bottom of the lineup, do I trust Severino here? I think we I think we go to the pen. I really think we go to the pen here. It's righty righty and then switch. I think Yasmani Grandal kills uh Yasmani Grandal kills lefties, I think. We're just gonna bring Joe Jimenez into the game. I'm gonna reach on an error, but it doesn't matter. Juan Soto facing Joe Ross, he flies out. Walk for Solak, a line out for Hazley, and a fielder's choice. Fletcher, Adele, and Trout. Here I almost want to go to Reyes. <laughs> I almost want to go to Reyes here. 
And I actually think I'm going to. Fielder's choice. Joey Dell on first. Mike Trout's going to walk. A pop out for Jared Walsh. Glaber Torres. Fielder's choice. Let's go, Alex Reyes. You're the man. You're the man. I was too afraid of Mike Trout there. Corey Lee doubles again. He's four for four with a homer and three doubles. Alex Reyes is going to get the six out save. Player of the game, Corey Lee. Absolute day for him. Just disgusting. And another, and now we got a divisional matchup. Round Rock Express win the AAA championship, by the way. Don't mean to brag. So it's going to be Spencer Howard, Zach Allen, Colby Allard, and then it looks like John King is going to get the start if it goes five. Well, actually, Severino would get the start if it goes five. I might give it to Severino first game of the home half, depending on how well the beginning of the series goes. As we are down 2-0, it looks like it's going to have to be... I'm just checking stamina here for Severino. Yep, Severino's going. Severino's got to go. Severino is going. It's Allard's spot. Not even going to focus on the next one. We just need to get through this. I'm not going to super sim. I'm only going to super I'm only going to jump in for like if it goes to game 5 and we get swept. Let's sim to the end of the postseason see who wins. The Mets defeat the Astros. All right. Well, that's it. That is the final blow there. This is actually a fun save. This is a fun save. I might continue this off camera, but there is the final team. The pitching rotation is there. No Jack Leiter because he sucked too hard uh, in year five. There's the final lineups there. Some really fun prospects to keep an eye on. I mean, we get a lot of prospects. If there's one thing I will admit about me playing baseball video games, it's, 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 it is that I am a prospect hugger. I do not like to give up my prospects. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this video, about Juan Soto becoming a Rangers goat uh, in one swing of the bat, etc., etc. Let me know what I should have done differently, maybe, where I should have improved the team, maybe which prospect or which player I held on too long. But otherwise, guys, thanks for watching. And keep your eyes out for more of these. I'm not sure how fast I'm going to put them out because I am busy and they do take a while to make, but I appreciate anyone who gives me some support and uh, throws down a comment, lets me know what you want to see or just give me your feedback. It really is, really is helpful. So thank you guys and uh, I'll see you in the next video.